All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. As promised, we are talking about the new Frost Prime build. Uh, this is his refresh as of getting some changes to his augment on his four. Uh, it was a minor adjustment that happened just before Tenocon, and I didn't have time to make the video until now, unfortunately. But here we are, and we have a fancy new skin, so cool, I guess. Uh, and uh, the build might not look that different from your more traditional Frost builds, but it is considerably better. So, Steinax's new four augment that could give you and your entire party 11 T billion overguard and just have, you know, millions of overguard sitting around, which was very funny and good. That got nerfed to have a cap, and it is still very good. But Frost 4, at the same time, got bumped up to be the nerfed version of Steinax's 4, which admittedly it's still a little worse in some ways. Uh, but I see Avalanche now hits all the enemies and gives you and all your allies overguard, and that scales up to a base 100% strength cap of 15,000. Uh, so we can actually get pretty good survivability out of overguard, especially at most levels of play, only really, you know, becoming a problem in things like circuit uh, for the most part. So we have a very strong amount of survivability on an avalanche focused build. And avalanche is pretty much the only ability worth talking about on frost. Uh, it strips armor in a very effective manner. It crowd controls all the enemies. Uh, and now it gives you defenses. So it basically is the entire point of playing frost. It is everything about his kit that is good with the minor consideration for you know defending excavators or defending a defense objective or whatever with snow globe is is an improvement obviously not being able to shoot through snow globe and a variety of other factors are still annoying as a factor but it's fine for those things and it pushes enemies away from them whenever you cast it so that's also a small consideration uh and some small part of you will also like try and do the percentage damage that snow globe can do but that sucks uh so yeah mostly this is going to be avalanche focused and for that we have max range well nearly max range i'm not running cunning drift because we definitely don't need that much because we have a 40 meter range uh on avalanche as that stands so far which is very very good and we're at 178 percent strength which means we're actually a little over the armor reduction threshold it doesn't really matter if you go like deeper and deeper into strength because it's only going to make your ability more effective uh, because you're going to be able to build up more overguard on this build we get to about like 35,000, 40,000 overguard as our cap it is worth noting, though, that in terms of building Overguard, this is slow. So, so slow, uh, because we are only getting 100 Overguard per enemy. So, it's a little... It's, a, it's, it's quite slow. It's quite slow. It's way slower than Steinax's buildup, uh, and it is much, much slower than Calervo's buildup on Overguard, and, you know, comparing it to Rhino would be just ridiculous. Uh, so it is going to take us a while to get to, like, really meaningful levels of Overguard once we're, like, you know, into the actual base cap of, like, 15,000 plus. Um, but once you're up in that, it is going to be basically like you're totally invincible. And it is, of course, also giving us status immunity, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, for that, there's not really a lot else to talk about here on the build, except for you might want to consider that on this you can drop Augur Secrets. You'll get under 92% armor reduction, uh, which you do want to be at 100%, so you can swap this to Corrosive Projection, or just wait for Molt Augmented to kick in to get you over that 100% threshold. And you can put Prime Flow in here if you throw one more Forma in. I have not personally opted for that, uh, because I feel like it's like, just kind of unnecessary. Uh, but I have opted for two regular Blue Shards. If you have some of these kicking around, Frost really, really appreciates it. You do not want to be at Frost's normal base energy of 150 that is just too low uh, because we are using Nourish as our energy economy, but we need somewhere for all of that Nourish energy generation to go. So at least two blue shards is what I would suggest here. You probably could get away with one Tau shard for energy uh, on him if you really wanted to. But I know that you know a lot of like later end players have blue shards just kind of laying around and they don't really know what to do with them. And this is a very good use for it. You could add as many as you want and just like have as much energy as you feel like is necessary. But I would also suggest uh, at least one casting speed shard just makes Avalanche a lot more comfy to get through in terms of the casting time on that ability. Otherwise, things that are important and another reason we're running Nourish besides energy economy is that this gives us 133% additional viral damage on our weapons because our 4 is an armor strip and we don't have any good way to deal damage at higher levels. Uh, 
we are bumping up our weapon damage with this. It's also going to buff our entire team's weapon damage, which is important. Uh, but if you're just going to bring some good weapons, then it's going to make enemies look like paper mache. If they no longer have armor and are frozen, uh, good weapons like the Latron and Lex Incarnans are just going to evaporate enemies like they do not exist. Uh, and it is not going to be a problem. So, to show that off real quick, we've got uh, we've got our classic, you know, the 20 Corrupted Heavy, heavy Gunners at uh, Steel Path, level 195. And this is, you know, you spend a little bit of time, like, building up your Incarnan. And then, you know, go into Incarnan mode for long periods of time and just, you know, do the do to them. When they don't have armor, they are kaput. Obviously, whenever we actually go into the Steel Path, there's going to be the bigger consideration that Xmas units are not stopped uh, by R4. They are not frozen in place, so we can just easily eliminate them. So, you do need to focus on Xmas units, as they will be the only ones that can really do significant damage to you, because they're the ones that are immune. Uh, and then also, you know, things like the Acolytes showing up will need to be dealt with quickly as well. But those armor strips will also not survive for very long. But yeah, just like, you know, going in and even showing this with Nourish this time... Uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty telling for the kind of, uh, kind of experience that we're going to be happening, or that we're going to be having, rather. It's quite good. Like, it is perfectly acceptable. Do I think that Frost is, you know, one of, like, the best frames now or something like that? No, that's ridiculous. There's tons of frames that do this stuff better. But this augment makes it much more reasonable to just play Frost in what I would consider to be regular content. We're talking about, you know, doing like a half hour in like high level uh survival on steel path we're talking about doing disruption missions and like not just dying the moment a significant enemy looks at you a little sideways uh just being able to do steel path content in like a comfy nice way and being able to you know like really rip and tear on the regular path if that's what you're doing uh i think is you know it's a nice like kind of probably b rankish area for frost to be in which is a far cry from him being, like, one of the worst frames in the game, kind of down there, hanging out with, like, Hydroid's area, who also, hopefully, with the rework, is going to be much, much better. Um, but yeah, Frost much improved. Let's get into the, the Steel Path, and uh, let's, let's freeze some dudes, do some classic shit. <clears throat> we do a little Steel Pathing. Yeah, this is going to be, I mean, like... Like all weapons platform type Warframes, a little bit of this is going to be, you know, hey, the weapon's doing some work. But unironically, Frost removing all the armor is more of a damage multiplier than, like, kind of all the mods on the weapon are providing in a lot of cases. So, would suggest. You can see Nourish with Zenerik there. Very nice for energy generation, of course. We'll throw the Lex around a little bit, too. I wanted to go Lat Latron and Lex because it's, like, you know, very much, like, kind of classic, like, old, old Warframe. And with the new Incarnan, obviously, you get a little bit of that new shit. By a little bit, I mean... I mean a lot. <laughs> I mean a ton. Recast that way too early. You can see just like nourish on. Like these enemies aren't to the level where you even really need to be using nourish, if I'm honest. They certainly don't need to be if they are uh, armor stripped. Yeah, crowd controlling enemies uh, that are non Eximus. We'll get into like more Eximus spawn rates kind of like in like the middle end of uh, things going on here. Yeah, no armor, one shot, kill everyone in a whole hallway, and just pipe cleaner. Also, for, you know, charging up in Karnans, it's very easy just to, you know, pick and choose and grab your headshots. So, because you're armor stripping them, it might be a, a little bit of an ordeal in terms of the actual, like, charge up rate that you're getting, because they're going to die on, like, the first pellet. And I also probably want to spam the uh, the four a little more just to build up. You can see I've got like about ten thousand now, and that's just due to uh, high spawn rates and skill path will will get you there. A consideration for this build is that if you do not have like pretty good enemy density, 
Uh, well, normally you're not going to really be under much threat if that's the case. Uh, but a thing that, that does matter for that is uh, you will generate significantly less overguard. So that is a thing to keep in mind. Yeah, now that we're kind of up at cap here, just moving on through these enemies. And like I'll I'll not cast my four a little bit here, so you can kind of see like, the kind of general survivability that we're gonna get if we're like actually fighting enemies, and it'll be more apparent even while I'm like charging up here. Kind of like let them shoot at me. You can see, like you know this is this is steel path level, and I'm like kind of letting them get away with this, and like we're getting some good levels of survivability here. Like, is it Revenant? No. Absolutely not. That's hysterical to, like, present it as anything like that. Um, but it is, like, totally usable and, like, good. Especially whenever you, like, keep regenerating it up at, like, a decent pace uh, with enemy counts being pretty alright. Like, you can end up in a, in a spot that's fairly solid at the very least. And having a good weapon to capitalize on the armor strip means we can actually have, like, an okay kill rate. Like, I should probably kind of optimize where I'm fighting and do more, like, you know, these long hallways like this. And not fight enemies in, like, that room. And it's, it's actually funny, the last build refresh we did was Gara, who, like, doesn't care about line of sight at all and can, you know, just wipe the wipe the floor with these enemies in this room over here. But it, it actually kind of shows that because, like, I'm having to um, kill enemies with guns, uh, that room is actually much, much worse because the line of sight just, it ain't great. You can kind of use your four as a radar. Like, if you need to get, like, a more exacting idea of, like, where enemies are, generally it's pretty good at, like, showing you where they are uh, through walls, like, like right here. You can see that, like, right there, I know there's two enemies here because of the ability damage through walls, which is nice. Kind of a minor thing and, and more of a general tip than, like, a Ross-specific experience, but... Yeah, you can see, obviously, the XMS are vulnerable to uh, the freeze uh, eventually. We're keeping up life support pretty good. A lot of that, I mean, these weapons are very good. Like, if, if you are on a Warframe that can survive, which Frost now is, you're generally going to be pretty good with these weapons just one way or another. Because obviously like the, the way that I've shown these weapons off in the past already is like, oh yeah, just by itself uh, with a Warframe that can, can, that can live. Turns out it's pretty good. Mania here. Evaporated. Like armorless, armorless behavior. Like it is, yeah. It is not a big deal at all. Like they, they go away. Turns out good gun, no armor. Enemy dead now but like this is this is the place where you could not play frost like this before like you theoretically could if you were like being like really really vigilant um with making sure that like you were throwing your three down and like always like kind of standing on the edges of it and making sure that like you weren't being shot from behind and like doing all this like extra like let's call it brain work i guess that a bunch of other frames don't just don't need to do at all like, they just don't even have to consider any of that shit. Um, but now you get the advantages of Frost 4, which is that it is a very large, like, ignoring walls armor strip that also has crowd control on it, which is all right. Uh, and you get to live at, like, a reasonable amount. It is making Frost so much more, like, you know, fr friendly for our regular content in a big way, because... Before it was very much a well, you can force you, you could you can force Frost like he has a armor strip, and then whatever you subsume on him is technically also there. 
but now it feels like the subsume is like helping the playstyle that he wants to go down anyway. And really, like, you're seeing me do it a lot here, but I kind of, like, I'm not building as much as I could be because I could be doing this and just, like, spamming it out as, like, much as I want. And then it's, like, grabbing the Nourish Energy, throwing this out there again, building another 5,000, and, and so on and so forth. You don't really super need to do that, though. And that part of that is because we have the Overguard Gate now. The Overguard Gate is uh, actually super helpful because um, it means you get your Shield Gate and your Overguard Gate. And because we're using auger mods in the build, we are refreshing both of those, though not the full shield gate, every single time that we press our four, which is the whole point of the build. Um, so our, our survivability, like our panic survivability, is basically like two full seconds of invincibility every time we cast our four. And obviously, even at high level, that's not so bad, especially with how much, you know, if, if you can keep killing while you're doing that, uh, you're doing pretty good. And enemies being frozen works at all levels of play as it happens like the only enemies that are really going to pose a threat to you are enemies you're not paying attention to or eximus units or like specialty units i guess i would call them uh and all that stuff well, apparently i've picked up credits wow they're charging up sometimes it's a bit unfortunate like if they uh have grabbed their head um, but it's also really not a big deal. You're just kind of picking enemies off willy-nilly. We see we have we have plenty of time to do that. We can just get in there. Uh, being, being able, like, having enough survivability where you can, like, be a little meticulous with some of the, um, the Incarnans and, like, kind of very casually charge them is, is also an advantage because... Being able to, like, have it not be a big deal that you need to recharge your Incarnan and not be, like, in danger because you're now not killing enemies as fast is also just a huge boon to playability. Obviously, you could always opt for just, like, well, just don't use an Incarnan. But then you're foregoing the power of any given Incarnan, which, you know, something like the Torrid is much easier to charge, and you could absolutely use that on basically any Warframe in the game, and it's always just going to work. Um, but something like the Latron... Requires a little more input at the front end, and I think I think personally gives you a bit more output on the back. The same with the Lex. Like, really, the Lex and the Latron. Like, the reason I didn't just choose the Torrid, which will make short work of every single enemy that we are looking at here, and also be, like, nothing to charge. Uh, part of the reason is because I wanted to show off that, like, you, you do get, like, the freedom to be like, oh, yeah, no, it's, like, it's fine. Like, I can, I can have cooldown periods of like not infinite murder and it's not going to make a huge amount of difference in terms of uh like oh this is a period where like i'm weak and i'm like frost can't handle it it's like no you've got your four and it's providing enough survivability that even in sealed path like kind of you know just running face first into enemies and even not caring about like every Xmas you see you're gonna be all right which is good and we'll wait for the the second acolyte here because honestly i could use some steel essence But yeah, much happier with where Frost is now. Do I still think that Frost 1 and 2 and probably also 3 need work? Yeah. But right now, his 4 is holding his whole build up and making it, like, quite usable. And I'm okay with that. I will say I do wish that um, his 4 augment was the one that you get from Circuit as it would make it a lot easier to recommend playing him for, like, a newer player. But without, like, the survivability... How dare you become water? Without, like, the survivability that you get um, from this augment, it's pretty hard to recommend that you play Frost at all without it. Like, minus the augment, it really goes back to... It, it, it's the different from me think it's the difference of me thinking that frost is like kind of like about a b rank warframe like fine like all right um and being like absolutely unusable like it, re it really is that big of a difference on just that augment but yeah that's uh that's the new frost you know you can see we about 11 minutes about about a thousand kills which is again mostly gun responsibility but made easy uh by what frost can provide from his four now so yeah good stuff
Good stuff, new Frost. Didn't think that Frost would be uh, at this level with just like, you know, kind of a simple augment tweak, but sometimes that's all it takes. Uh, so that's, that's not bad. Okay, welcome on in everyone. It has been quite a month with Denocon happening and everything, but moving back in, well, we have another convention this month, but thank you to all the patrons. First and foremost, uh, Alex Parnum, Angel SPM, Arbiter Daydream, Vinuvin, uh, Blotomatic, Brandon Coggin, Brutus Salazar, Dylan Dworski, Athrain, Fawn, IQ is Thick, James Harsthorn, uh, JC for Science, Jesse Richens, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Lou Xanth, Malachi Williams, Minty Ginja, Mitchda, Nerve, Ramoxidate, Tamriolic Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, Homeworm, Fly Two Wars, Zach Sainer, and Zerafir. Uh, much appreciate to all of the zero patrons, but also thank you to all of the $5 patrons. There are a ton of you now, and it is much appreciated. And of course, the $2 patrons as well. But yeah, this month, uh, I'm going to be trying to, I mean, honestly, there's so many games releasing. I am going to be streaming a lot but also trying to get a lot of guides and stuff out there, especially for some new Warframe stuff that has been happening. Um, but yeah, it'll be a good time. 